Prin hawn da shimai. Here at Thlamblethian Orchards, we're about ready to do our late blend of the year using apples that have been sourced from our own orchard in Slambledian. So I thought I'd do a short video about the different varieties we're going to use to make this blend. So you can see the varieties in front of you here on this uh, plank of wood, and I'll talk about each of them in turn. Okay, the first apple I'll talk about is this one here. You can see it's quite a red apple. It's quite elongated in shape. Um, if you know your cider apples, you've probably already guessed what it is, but if you haven't, it's called Yarlington Mill. It's quite a famous cider apple variety. It's called a mild bittersweet. What that means is that the flavour in it, it has no real sharpness, no acidity, but it has uh, an amount of tannins in there, the drying bitterness you want in cider, but it's not overly so, so it's a, hence a mild. Uh, when you talk about cider apples, um, a characteristic like the sharpness or the bitterness is either mild, medium or full. So bit of tannin, not too much, more bittersweet. So if we cut it open, I'll, I'll try a bit now. Now the thing to say about um, Yarlington Mill is it's quite famous and notorious for um, what happens when you ferment it. Uh, the juice often comes out very black in colour after you press it because uh, the tannins in there will oxidise and darken it. And you can see where it's bruised already. It started to get um, a darkened colour there. And the juice it creates is very cloudy, um, dark, orangey juice. And it can take two years to clear. So it can be quite notorious for small-scale cider makers. If they, they make a batch of cider out of yarn to and go, oh, I made cider, and then it never clears. And it just ends up looking like a kind of thick, dark orange squash. But uh, some people like that. But obviously, the modern palate, they like clear ciders. Quite a nice apple to eat, in truth. The texture of it's quite woolly, as they say. If you see me press it, it's not that juicy, and it just kind of just crushes down. This is good from a cider making standpoint because we need to mill it and press it. And if the fruit is too juicy, too much like an eater or a cooker, it can gum up the press cloth, and you get a bad extraction in there. Whereas these traditional cider apples with a more woolly texture, easier to press, you more likely to get all the juice out. And flavour-wise, you said it's a mild bittersweet. I've got sweetness in there. I've got some tannins. Hmm. Not bad eating apple. A bit weird. I'm trying to avoid doing my Miliband moment. <laughs> okay, the next one on the list here. Well, you'll probably recognise as well. This is actually Bramley's apple seedling. I've got one of these trees down my orchard, and um, although it's not a cider apple, a lot of cider makers do use some of these in their cider because they're obviously they're big apples. They're very juicy and they're full of acidity, so you can use them as a replacement for a cider sharp. And they've obviously got a very strong, good apple flavour in there. So, I mean, if I smell it, it's got a lovely, rich apple aroma. And, when you add this to the cider, you're going to add sharpness to it, you're going to lighten the cider up, you're going to reduce the uh, tannins in there, and you'll give it this wonderful rich apple aroma. So it, it's all, often used a bit in cider. And you can probably see the difference here when I cut it in about the amount of juice compared to the uh, Yarlington Mill, let's say. Yeah. So we cut it open here, you can see it's quite crisp flesh. If I squeeze a bit, you see the juice is just already dripping off my fingers. So it's a nice juicy apple, this. Mmm. I bite into it. It's incredibly sharp. It's juicy. There's some sweetness in there. So this will do well in the cider. It's got a good apple aroma and flavour. So this will hopefully lighten it up and give it a bit of apple zing. Okay, the next apple here is actually quite rare. I haven't seen anyone else plant this in South Wales. When I planted my orchard about 15 years ago, I didn't know anyone else that had orchards in the area. So I didn't really know what would grow, so I planted a huge range of different cider apples. About 36, as I recall. And some of them were quite weird and wacky. And this is one of the 
random ones I chose, like it's basically throwing a dart in a ball to see what sticks. And this one here is called Black Tom Putt. Tom Putt itself is quite a famous variety that I grow as well, and it's um, it's a September uh, triple purpose apple, so it could be used for eating, cooking, or making cider. It's kind of a light, sharp, acidic apple. Uh, it's quite red in colour and it's quite knobbly and um, misshapen, quite boxy they would say. And um, it is quite a popular apple. But this black uh, Tom Putt doesn't really look like a Tom Putt. It's slightly boxy in shape, you can probably see. It's not completely round, but it's got more of a round shape than a Tom Putt. The biggest similarity I'd say is it's red and the tree shape's quite similar. It's got a lot of bare... Uh, bark on there you know big spaces between the branches coming out this kind of thing so it does look similar the, the tree does but apple wise not so much this is a lot darker in color it's got some ribbing and striping in there it's got a very noticeable uh russet area around the stem there so it's, it's not really the same it's one of the apple varieties i actually really love in my orchard i'm planting more of it's uh, it's a late sharp, late cider sharp, but it does have a little bit of tannin. It's quite juicy, so it gets to be more like the Bramley there. Hmm. It's nowhere near as sharp as the Bramley, but I'm getting acidity out of that. The flesh is slightly more woolly, so I shouldn't have any issues pressing it. And. Hmm. A slight amount of tannin. It's um, one of my secret weapons in Slam Blevian Orchards. Because it's hard to get decent sharps later in the season, especially if you buy fruit in. And I do buy some fruit in as well as grow my own. And most of the orchards you'll find are old Bulmers orchards around Monmouthshire, where they're predominantly things like Dabinet, Michelin. They don't have many sharps. So apples like this is, is a godsend. So I, can, I can add it in there and because it's got a bit more tan and it's a proper cider apple it'll be slightly better for the cider than the bramley but it'll still give the sharpness that's needed to create the blend okay so if we look through the next ones this one here i'll pick out next is famous um cider apple variety I just mentioned is davenet i do grow a bit of this in my orchard and i planted some more around the barn in the corner and you'll see this planted more than pretty much any other cider apple variety. You can see they're quite small apples there. They're quite um, characteristic shape, I guess. The trees are quite dwarfing. It's quite easy to spot a dabinet tree. They're quite small trees. They've got a uh, good branch angles and good branch spacing. So they look like very neat, tidy trees. The apples themselves have got all this striping on there. They can be quite ruddy in colour. So, not a very pretty apple. They're not very juicy apples, and they're a medium bitter sweet. So we'd expect them to have tannins in there and bitterness, but not really any sharpness. Hmm. Yes, that is incredibly bitter. Very bitter apple. There's some sweetness in there. The flesh is quite woolly. It's not very juicy. We'll have no issues pressing this, of course. One annoying thing about um, Dabnets is they're not really juicy at all. You can have a whole trailer full of um, Dabnets, and I'll be picking up a couple of ton next week, and I'll press them, and I'll have terrible juice extraction compared to some of the other apples I use, but it produces a really first-class cider. So it's basically uh, horses, of course, if you take your pick. Okay, and another apple here, and this is quite a different, interesting one. These apples are a bit smaller than normal because the trees produce so much fruit. But this here is Ashton Brown Jersey, which is a late uh, Jersey style apple. And it was catalogued and I guess discovered by the um, Long Ashton Research Institute. It's uh, end of October, start of November, bittersweet cider apple. The tree itself has got quite an upright habit. They're quite easy to spot, but they take a long time to fruit, so they're not really that popular anymore. 
and I didn't say them, but you can see it's got this quite ruddy complexion. And this is quite a light apple. In fact, the ones that are really received the sunlight can be pretty dark and ruddy and muddy looking. Not, not very pretty apples. And they have russeting around the top and they've got this kind of elongated shape. Hmm. Again, that is powerfully tannic. It's sweeter, I'd say, than the Davenet. So there's more juice in there. I'm getting a big hit of tannin in there. So they'll hopefully be great for cider. And whenever I've made cider before with um, Aston Brown Jersey, it's a wonderful apple. It gives a very characteristic, rich, interesting cider. So hopefully that will really bring this blend forward. Okay, the, the next one to talk about, I don't have many of these, but it's an interesting apple. When I was planting my orchard, I planted some eaters. And you don't generally make good cider out of eaters but having a small amount of eaters in the cider does help because they have better apple aroma, um, they're nice light apples, and it, it can help lighten cider, especially if you've got a large amount of dabinets in the mix like I do. It'll reduce the tannin slightly, it'll give more apple aromas and some other interesting characteristics. And this apple here, I, I must confess, I, I bought it on the silly name. It's called Golden Knob. It's an old apple that was grown uh, predominantly in Kent uh, for the markets of London in the 19th century. So housewives or I guess uh, maids or whatever could put it in the um, lunch boxes of the school children. It's kind of it's quite a small russeted apple. These are a bit early to eat in fact. They need to mature a bit longer but it's quite a honey flavour in there. So it's got quite a nice apple aroma. I said this is a bit early but it's when it's perfectly ripe, it's got a nice, honeyed, light, sweet flavour. Mm. I'm getting light sweetness out of there. I'm getting some kind of muskiness at the back of the palate as well. So hopefully some of that will come through to the cider. Because the musky qualities do come through with cider apples. Like if you have say Broxwood Foxwell, or any of the Foxwell varieties that are quite famous for their muskiness, or Kingston Black, it does follow through to the cider, and it gives an interesting note to the cider. So hopefully a bit of that will come through, and it will just add a little bit of quirkiness to the uh, final product. The next one is uh, Pippin. This is Woolbrook Pippin. Um, I, I do like Cox's Orange Pippin and others, but a lot of them you can't grow in this side of the country, because they're very prone to cankers and scabs. So uh, I, I asked um, Thornhaze Military, I bought these trees from, and I asked for a disease resistant pippin and they recommended this one. It's, as you can see, it's quite a small apple. It's um, quite red and flushed again with a bit of yellow on the other side. They're, they're nice, pretty apples, they are. It needs a, a good year, I'd say, to get to its uh, best flavour. It should hopefully be quite good this year. Again, it's um, nice and juicy. It's a lot more juicy than, say, the Davenets. If we look inside, I'll actually pull the seeds through. You can see the seeds are black in there, dark brown black, and that's a good indication of fruit to ripe. So, hmm. Oh, that's a gorgeous apple. It's uh, sweet, sharp. You get a hit of um, sharpness immediately. You got sweetness in there. A really good apple aroma with bits of pear drop in there. That should be interesting. And I've got a small amount of that. And hopefully in the blend, that will just lighten it up a bit and make it a bit more um, zingy and apple juicy. Okay, the last apple to talk about is again quite a famous cider apple variety. This is called Sweet Copper. This is what would be regarded as a sweet cider apple. That means it doesn't really have any tannin, it doesn't have the bitterness in there, it doesn't really have any sharpness. It's also regarded as a vintage cider apple that you can make a single variety out of this for a good cider, which might seem a bit of a misnomer, whereas it doesn't really have any tannin or acidity. But um, it's quite useful in the blend again, because it's going to add its own interesting characteristics. It's, going to slightly reduce the tannin load in there and the acidity and it'll have its own quirkiness in there. 
It's got a great apple aroma, these apples, which is nice. So hopefully we'll get a bit of that coming through in the cider. So when you smell the cider at the end, you'll be like, oh, this really does smell. It's made with apples. So you can see there, these kind of mottled, yellowy uh, apples, not too pretty. There's a bit of scab marking on it. It's got a slight amount of rusting on the top. But that's not really important for cider. We don't care what it looks like. It's, is it going to be a good apple? Quite a nice apple to eat on its own, Andrew. The flesh is quite woolly, in the texture of it, but still quite juicy. So it looks like it'd be a very easy apple to press and get a good juice extraction. Flavour-wise, there's not too much to it. There is some tannin in there, and it's an apple that is known some years to produce a small amount. So that's probably a similar tannin load to the Yarlington Mill, I guess. So I'd say this year it's a mild bitter sweet. The amount of acidity and tannin can vary year to year. There's some sweetness in here. Perhaps some honeyed notes as well. This should be quite interesting. So hopefully, when we blend all these uh, apples together, we should create an interesting cider. And this, as I said, will be the late uh, Flamblevian Orchards blend. And fingers crossed we'll get something interesting out of it. Thank you. Hi there. Hi there. And now, we're welcome to Mastermind Apple Edition. 